Hey Scion fans, today I'm here with the 2012 XV, and I wanted to give you a two year, 60,000 mile owner review and update. Now this video will be a little bit different than a normal car review video would be. I'm going to go over some things that I like about it, some very few things that I don't like about it, and I'll throw in some of my personal opinions about it, being that I've come to know it over the past two years and 60,000 miles. So let's go ahead and get started. To give you a little bit of a background about the car, of where it came from and when we purchased it, we purchased it two years ago, just a little bit over two years ago actually, July 31st of 2013, and we purchased it from Phil Bachman, Toyota Scion, at the time it was Phil Bachman, and now it's Johnson City Toyota, and that dealership is located in Johnson City, Tennessee. We purchased it with just under 14,000 miles, and it was sold to us as a certified Scion vehicle. Now, for those of you that don't know, Scion and Toyota vehicles come with a seven year from your purchase date warranty and 100,000 miles. And that is your engine, powertrain, transmission, all that stuff. And it also comes with one year of free roadside assistance. Of course, that one year is well up now. And a 12,000 mile one year bumper to bumper warranty and of course that is up as well so as you can see it has the sizzling crimson mica exterior what's different from the one year owner review that I posted last year is back then it had six spoke plastic rim covers and in my opinion I thought they were kinda ugly so I decided to upgrade to the split five spokes definitely a lot nicer looking not as cheap looking more high quality uh, look to them $118 at my local Toyota dealership not too bad of a price the exterior of the car is holding up very well pretty much in the same condition as it was when we got it LED turn signals on the mirrors, and you have rear privacy glass on both the rear doors and your hatch. Since we bought it, uh, let's see here. Two things that we've done to it. I put new wipers on it and also new tires. These are Goodyear Assurance Authorities, and they are um, 215 45R16s. Pretty decent tires. They have about 9,000 miles I think on them and they're holding up pretty well also recently just done I purchased some brake pads all the way around at the local Toyota dealership genuine Toyota brake pads $144 for the whole set all four and uh, they weren't really uh, down they didn't really need to be changed but as long as I had it on my mind I thought it'd be a good idea to change them Again, the sizzling crimson mica exterior. Stepping inside, you have a black and gray cloth interior, interior with a little bit of a pattern there that you see in some other Toyota vehicles. That same pattern is also inserted in the doors. A plastic material up on top of your doors and also on various parts of the dash. I like to call it perforated plastic because if you look closely, it kind of looks like it could be perforated leather, but it's plastic, so I call it perforated plastic. I thought that was a pretty good name for it. Power windows, locks, and mirrors. One touch, automatic down, driver's window. The rest are just automatic down, or automatic regular power windows. Window lock control here. Door locks. Cup holder. And storage in the doors. Right here to the left of the steering wheel is your power mirror controls and your interior dim lighting controls. Down here you have your hood release. Below that is your gas door release. Vehicle stability control right here below your power mirror controls. A little bit of a storage area right here to the left of the steering wheel. 
cruise control on the bottom right of the steering wheel. Over here behind the cruise control, or actually behind the steering wheel to the left. Lighting controls, parking lights, low beams, high beams, and of course your blinkers. Over here in the center, you have your flashers. Let's go ahead and get the keys out of my pocket and we'll start it up. See if we can get through this video before it gets dark. I think we should be able to. Probably be a little bit longer since it's a two year owner review. Just filled it up earlier today on a full tank of gas. It says 339 miles and we've driven it a few miles since then. Home from the gas station so probably around five miles. It says we're currently averaging 28.4 miles per gallon and that's with a combination of city and highway driving so that's not too bad. Now I said it was 60,000 miles but I'm going to call it that even though it's just a little bit under 60, 59,297. No dash lights on of any kind, no engine light, brake lights, anything like that out of the ordinary that shouldn't be on. The interior dash panels and audio controls and climate control systems are still holding up very well with no wear to your buttons. All the plastics are pretty durable. One thing that I've come to realize over the past couple of years, no fading or any kind of breaking of interior plastics. It has the Scion Pioneer HD radio system. And that radio does have Bluetooth. Very simple to connect it to Bluetooth. Just take your phone and make sure your Bluetooth is on. And push the call button if you're connecting for the first time. I've already connected my phone so it should automatically connect. I'll go ahead and push call. There you go. And then select whichever phone you want to connect. Now it says it's searching for my phone. And there you go, it is now connected to make phone calls, play music off of, or anything you may want to do with the Bluetooth like that. Over here to the left of the steering wheel is audio controls. Below your audio controls is climate controls. Air conditioning still works excellent, heat still works excellent. Also, just recently done was the cabin air filter. That was pretty nasty. Uh, Replace that, and the, that will definitely make a difference. If you notice a reducage in your power of the blowing system, your ventilation ducts, um, or you have like a slight smell coming from your ventilation ducts, check your cabin air filter. That uh, could be a sign that uh, you need to replace that. I decided to go with the genuine Toyota one, and it cost about $25. $5, I think I have the receipt for it in the glove box. It does have Toyota's four speed shiftable automatic sport mode. Take a look up here first, second, third, fourth, and that is paired to Toyota's 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, also found in the Toyota Camry. Sun visors up top here. Looks like we still got some mail up here. I'll go ahead and move that. Sun visor with a slide cover for your mirror. These are hard plastic, a nice durable plastic material. Headliner is holding up very well. Interior lighting, we'll go ahead and leave that on. Over here, this is set to stay off, but I'll switch it to door so it comes on when the doors are open. Let's slide this back up here. Put the windows down, or driver's window down. I mentioned this in my last video, when the vid, uh, windows are locked, the driver can't control the windows, which is, it kind of defeats the purpose. Usually in most cars, the driver can control the windows even when they're locked. I'll go ahead and put them all down now. Not a big issue, just a, just a little, uh, little thing. Take a look at your seats here. 
manual seats. This one here raises the seat up. Height adjuster. And this here is for your back support recliner. Over here is your gas door on the driver's side. If you do decide to get an XB or you have one, I suggest that you keep this area clean here. I always make sure I keep that clean. You can see in the cracks and crevices it's not totally clean. I haven't cleaned in here thoroughly in a little bit. But uh, dirt likes to build up here, here, and back in here. You want to make sure that you keep that area clean because down the road that could uh, tend to cause some rust if you don't keep that clean and free from moisture. So now stepping into the back, keep in mind that this is a compact car, but once you're inside here, it definitely does not feel like a compact car. You have a lot of leg room and really it feels like you're almost in a full size car. This seat is all the way back and it's reclined about regularly and you can see that the seat kind of curves up. So even if it was reclined a little bit more, I would still have enough leg room for my knees and feet to be able to move around. And for the rear doors as well as the front you have the cloth insert and the same plastics as up front. Door handles and everything on the interior as I mentioned is holding up very well. Cup holders, or one cup holder rather. Over here in the center you do have flop down cup holders. Two, one for each of the rear passengers. Up here, clothes hanger with a handle. And of course the headrests are adjustable. Looks like it's starting to get a little bit dark, but we're still getting some pretty good light to the vehicle. Listening to it run, it's very quiet. Still sounds just like a newer car. No weird noises or anything out of the ordinary. It does have LED tail lights. Get a view of the hatch while it's open. Nice entryway for the hatch if you have to load up some bigger items than normally you'd haul. 60-40 split bench seat. Push this button. And the seats will flop down. Very easy. Giving you a large amount of cargo space. Very, very spacious. Back here, we don't really haul a whole lot of stuff in here since we got the 95 Astro Van. I don't know if you can see it or not. But we haven't been really hauling a whole lot of stuff in here. So this is still pretty good shape back here. Right here is the only thing for interior wise really that I've noticed is this here is starting to come up. I'm sure that could be easily fixed. That's pretty much the only thing that's wearing I would say on the interior. Hatch lighting. If you do have an XB you can also get cargo storage nets to put right here where you'd have a net to store stuff here and also there. I think it wouldn't have looked bad if they decided to put windows there but not a big deal. Looking underneath the mat, I really don't think much has been set on this here under the mat. Everything that we've hauled have have been uh, has been put on the mat. Nothing really on this part. You can see it still looks like new. Locks. Underneath this, you have a foam storage tray. I keep some fuses there. Over to the left, you have a jack, and to the right, you have a tire iron. Below this is your spare tire. I've never had to use the spare tire, which is a good thing. Storage compartments on each side. We'll go ahead and flop this mat back down. Again, a little bit longer of a review than normal, 
but I am going quite a bit more in depth with this one. The seats flop up with ease without even having to push any kind of button or anything. Just push them back and they lock right back into place. The seat's back all the way also and reclined a little bit more than the drivers but still not cramped at all. Let's go ahead and slide over here in the center. Still a little bit tighter but still pretty nice amount of legroom for a compact car. I really don't think that there's too many others in the compact uh, field that you'd get that have much more legroom than the XB. Go ahead and put the seat back down here. Get a view of that cargo space. Also these headrests do come off. If you do take these off they give the interior a much more open feel. Also handy if you have to haul long items and fold the seat down. We'll get to that in a minute. Again, same plastics as all the other doors in the vehicle. Cup holders, power window, power locks, all that stuff speaker up here on the door. This is your defroster for your side windows. Circular rotating ventilation ducts. Closable. Storage slot here. Nice for papers or uh, whatever you may want to put there. Damped glove box. You'll see in here I have a few items. I have a little Toyota badge that I picked up a while back at a garage sale for I think 50 cents. Thought that was kind of neat to leave in here. This here, very handy, very nice thing to have. I've written down some of the specs here in the front. Oil type, size engine, size transmission, uh, what brand of oil I've used for the oil changes, all that good stuff. VIN numbers there also. This is a maintenance book from, I tracked down the history of the maintenance from the previous owner and up until we purchased it on July 31st of 2013. And you can see it has a pretty good maintenance history. All the way up here until 60,000 miles or 59,000 miles. Over here when I had the tires on, put on, wrote that down. I have the receipts for that in this little folder there. Even something as simple as filling up the gas tank, I like writing that down to have for records. When I installed, or when my dad and I installed the front and rear brake pads and check the rotors. And whenever I wash it, detail it back in the interior, I like writing that down also. Just something very handy to have. Uh, yeah, right here, this is today's. I haven't finished that yet. But very, very handy book to have for when you go to sell the vehicle or for just peace of mind when you. Uh, have a vehicle that you'd like to keep for a pretty long time. Under these floor mats, the carpet is still like brand new. We haven't really stepped on the factory floor mats a whole lot, just the rubbers, so they're still in good shape. And I don't want to pull this up. I have some, I bought two sets of Goodyear floor mats, and I cut, I put one down and cut the second set up and kind of custom fit them like weather text these this isn't all one piece this is a few different pieces but uh, custom fit uh, max truck 9906 mats feel free to message me if you'd like to order some for your vehicle <laughs> I don't know if you can see the carpet under there just like brand new I myself and pretty much I don't think anybody in my family nobody in my family and I have never stepped on the bare carpet itself and we've barely stepped on the factory floor mats just the rubbers so that's nice. Still in good shape. Still has new car smell. Very nice. In here you have a storage tray and below that is a USB port to hook up your phone to charge it or play music off of it. Looks like it is starting to get a little bit dark out so we'll try to speed up the process. Let's take a closer look at the Pioneer HD radio system. 
Now I'm going to play music through the Bluetooth off of my phone. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get some. Let's see if I can find a song here just a moment. You can uh, control the volume on your phone and also on the radio. See if I can get you a good look at how the stereo sounds. It says Hank Williams, but obviously it's not Hank Williams. Sometimes it tells you who it is, sometimes it doesn't. When I know Max volume is 63. Consider all the worlds I has have made. I see four total speakers. I'm sorry, six. Two on each of the front doors. Up top and bottom. And then one on each of the rear doors. Push this center button here. And you have different controls here. Audio control, your fader, balance, bass, treble, ASL, and ASR. Also, you have different modes. SSP, feel. We'll go ahead and turn this up a little bit. And then feel, natural. You can notice the difference in the settings. Very nice quality radio system. Thought it'd be nice to give you a good look at that. Front passenger has a nice amount of legroom. Not cramped at all. And this seat is all the way back. We'll turn the bass up just a little bit. Awesome sound system. Scion did a good job partnering up with Pioneer for the radio systems. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood here. And again, this has been a very lengthy review, but I just wanted to give you a good look at how the car has treated us and the overall quality and durability of it. The hood is popped. You can barely feel it pop. I didn't think it was, but it is. I'll go ahead and turn the park lights on. I'll turn the flashers on just so you can see the LED turn signals on the mirrors. Get a better view at them now that it's getting dark out. Now we'll go ahead and turn those flashers off so you can get a good look at just the park lights themselves. Pretty nice looking lights. And let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Under the hood, it has Toyota's 2.4 liter four cylinder engine producing 158 horsepower and 160 foot pounds of torque. Over the years, this engine has proven to be reliable and is also found in the Toyota Camry. Still at 60,000 miles, you'll notice that it's very quiet. A very sound engine, still at the miles. Very easy to maintain. Low maintenance. SAE 5W20 oil. 
and that is a dual overhead cam four cylinder engine dual overhead cams gives it that little bit of an extra pep before we go I wanted to give you one last look at the cargo space in full use with all the doors open the hatch open and the hood open just for an extra effect Now what you'll notice that is different is the passenger seat is now down. Both of the headrests are off of the front seats. And you have a much larger cargo capacity allowing you to slide longer items up across the whole vehicle continuing into the front. Very, very spacious vehicle. Very SUV-like. Nice solid feel to the doors. Really, an overall good car by Toyota. I have no complaints in two years and 60,000 miles of it. One thing that I mentioned in the last owner review of it, probably can't see it now because it's starting to get dark out, but the rear bumper is spidering in various places, even more so than the one year owner review was. Not a big deal, but still something to mention also the paint job itself is a very thin paint job and it scratches very easy so just be careful if you decide to purchase an XB keep that in mind in 2014 consumer reports rated the Scion XB quote the most reliable car that you can buy new and for my family, it has been probably the most reliable car that we've ever owned. Not one problem in 60,000 miles and two years of ownership. It also has an overall good safety crash rating by IIHS. And I believe Edmunds.com rated it as let's see I think for the past five years in a row the most reliable compact hauler I believe it was Edmunds might have been another website but the XB definitely does have a record of being reliable and being a good car now that we've used up most of our daylight we'll go ahead and wrap this video up if you're in the market for a compact car I highly recommend taking a look at the XB not the most luxurious car, but a good source of practical, sound, reliability. So, if I had to give the 2012 Scion XB one overall rating after two years of ownership and 60,000 miles, I would definitely give it a 10. Due to its reliability, its durability, and its overall good quality. I'm Eli with Max Truck 9906. Thanks for watching and check out my other videos.